Welcome back to Land the House. My ram pump keeps stopping, and let me show you why. You can see, that is a lot of nasty silt that just builds up on here. That silt and sediment keeps sticking to my intake, and what I'm wanting to do is increase the surface area by basically twice the amount. So let me show you how I made this piece, and then we'll get this installed. I'm gonna build the second screened intake to look very similar to the first one with just a few changes. So the materials are a three inch piece of PVC pipe. This is around two foot long. I need a piece of one inch pipe and then two caps and then I need some screen and either some hose clamps or in this case I'm gonna use some zip ties. Now to get the two together, I'm gonna to be using these uh, threaded pipe razors and then this T. Now, if you're following along, feel free to use just regular uh, socket parts instead of this threaded stuff. I just happen to have a whole workshop full of these components. So I'm gonna be using those. Simply thread these on. Okay. And then for this piece, it's gonna be going uh, to the uh, poly pipe. Now I have a barb fitting on the other end of the poly pipe, so I just need a small piece of one inch pipe to connect those two here. It can be like two inches long or so. But anyway, that's going to be the uh, the piece that connects these two together and uh, it should do quite well. So let's go ahead and get started on building uh, this piece here. Now previously I cut a large window out of here. And I think this time on this piece, I'm just going to put lots and lots of holes along here. So I've got a drill with a 3 8 inch bit and I'm going to move up to about here because the uh, cap is going to be there and you need to have some room for those uh, zip ties or hose clamps. So I think right about here should be fine. And there we have a whole bunch of holes in that pipe, looking pretty good. Should have enough surface area there to, uh, to pull in a lot of water. The next side I need to work on is the one inch pipe. Now I want this to fit inside of here by about this much. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this about right here and then I want to uh, go ahead and put holes in that as well. I also cut this small piece here and that's going to connect the two pieces together to the black poly pipe. Okay, so there is that, that's ready to go. And now I've got this piece cut down. I'm gonna go ahead and put holes in here. Now this pipe is really old, so I hope it doesn't uh, break it as I start doing the drilling here. No, pretty good. With all those holes cut in there, it's time to get this pipe into this pipe. To do that, I'm going to be using a product called Unisil. You may have heard that on the channel before. I'm not associated with this company, I just really like them a lot. It's a way of putting a pipe into a tank. Um, and this I'm gonna use to put a pipe into a cap. <laughs> now my hole saw is painfully dull here. I'm gonna go ahead and use it though, it just might take a moment. Um, but this is gonna be a one and a quarter inch, no, one and a three quarter inch hole saw for the one inch unit cell. I have the hole cut into this cap now. I'm gonna take the unisil and put it from the inside because I need to push the pipe from that direction. It'll be a little bit of a challenge to get it stuck in there. There's the unisil inside of the cap. Now to get this pipe in there, it's gonna be a bit of a challenge. So if you've got a file or some sandpaper, I recommend tapering the edge of your pipe. The file probably works better than this uh, sandpaper. Now to get the pipe into the unisil, it works really well to have some kind of soap. 
um, or else it's going to be uh, quite difficult to push that in there. Turns out I had to use the file after all to get this tapered down enough to go through the unisil, but it is definitely in there now. So to get this assembled, I'm just going to stick this pipe into here and that will cinch down like that. The other side will keep out debris coming down the creek like that. And there you go. So the next thing I need to do is get the screen on here so that all this silt and sediment won't be clogging that up. So I've just got a piece of regular window screen that I just want to cut down to this size here. I've got some 14 inch long zip ties here that I'm going to use to get this uh, screen to stay on. I just want to fold this over here and then use these zip ties to keep this into place. Now I've used hose clamps and they worked very well on the previous intake. So we'll see just how well the zip ties hold up here. They at least won't be rusting, but you have to cut them to do any kind of maintenance. Well, that's looking pretty good. I might throw one more zip tie here in the middle because this one is longer than the other one. And I don't want that screen to bunch up here. Okay, there we go. Very nice. So, this side will go into here and feed that side of the intake. And the other one will go the other way. And we should have some serious water input there. We just had a pretty good rain and things are clear right now, but I'm gonna go ahead and pull these rocks off of here. So a lot of people ask, is it necessary to build a dam for the intake? And the short answer is no. If you have enough, uh, a deep enough pool to put your intake in. Uh, for me, my water is not that deep. So I just stack a few of these flat rocks together and it brings up the water. So. Uh, the main thing is you can't have air getting into the drive pipe. So, okay, hopefully I'll just be able to spin this loose here. Okay, new plan. So, for some reason, I uh, glued this piece right here onto the intake when I first built this. So, I'm just going to have to rearrange things a little bit. Okay, so I've just got this configuration here. Okay, I think that's going to work. Okay, finally got that threaded. Let's get this back into position here. I think I've got this where it needs to be. Now I just need to take the time to get the uh, little dam built back up. Oftentimes for me, the ram pump is just a fun excuse to come out and play in the creek. But that should do it there. Should add plenty of extra surface area for those intakes. We'll see how well it works. Now I think I'm gonna go ahead and plop oh, this really big rock on here to prevent it from washing out in the next big rain. Now I'm probably gonna have to pull the air out of this line again. Let's check it out here. Yes, definitely. So once the air gets trapped in this line, the uh, flow is very small. So what I do is I hold it up above the intake point for a minute or two, or for a second or two, and then drop it all the way down. And it pulls that siphon again. 
and you'll hear a bunch of air gargling out. <laughs> Let's see if we can speed this up a little. There we go. That might be it. So now you can see that is a much better flow rate. So what I want is to keep that all the time, even whenever the uh, sediment is uh, building up on it. Hopefully with those two intakes, it'll be good. Well, I hope this double intake helps you out. There's so much silt and sediment in my creek that I'm thinking this will make it last much longer by pulling from both sides. My thought process was with one, you could actually feel the suction on the side of that screen uh, as it's pulling in that much water. But if I double it up, more surface area, it won't have as much suction towards the screen and that way it won't um, pull as much of that silt to itself. That's my thought process anyway. We'll give it a test and see how long it works. If you uh, are looking for a hydraulic ram pump, I have four different sizes for sale on my website, landahouse.com. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.